In this tutorial I want to look at animation and keyframes in Sony Vegas Pro. Now it's worth saying that we've already looked at keyframes and animation when we looked at event pan crop. If you remember wherever we had our current time indicator when we made a change it created a little diamond which was a keyframe saying change between this point and that point and transition or change happened over time between the first keyframe and the next keyframe. Now this can be a bit of a pain if you aren't at the beginning of a clip when you make a change and you want it to be the same all the way through a clip because it will change over time. If you do make a mistake like that, go back to the beginning and select the keyframe that's causing you a problem and just hit delete and it should be okay. But this was a spring loaded animation. In other words, no matter what you do, it's going to animate when you make a change. Whereas the other type of animation, which is found under effects that you add, is actually an animation where you decide whether you want to animate something or not. So what we call this is an animation toggle. You click this little clock item here to say I am going to be animating from this point onwards. Okay, so you don't click the toggle if you don't want to do any animation. You just set the value. So if it's not going to change over time, you are just setting the value. But if you want it to change over time, and clearly I've got foreground opacity here, there's nothing to see and I want it to reveal, just as an example, then I do want it to change over time. So therefore I say to Sony Vegas Pro, let's animate this item. And I click on the clock icon. I don't then click again to add additional keyframes. Once I've clicked this icon and it's down and it's, and it's enabled, whenever I make a change and I have moved my playhead, I've moved the cursor, then it will automatically create the keyframes I require. Now just for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to also animate the roundness. If you look at the clip here, I know you can't see anything, but if I take roundness all the way up, you can see it does make a difference, so there's a visible difference for you to see. So I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to click the clock icon for foreground opacity and for roundness. And as I do that, I get something happening down here. These are my animation lanes, and what you'll see here is I've got a keyframe, a diamond at the top, and then the actual points of animation for the roundness and for the foreground opacity actually shown here. So I'm just going to pull those in a bit so you can see them there. Now, you can change the type of keyframes that you've got. So I'll just go back over them. You can change the type of keyframes you've got, not at the top here. If I right-click on there, you'll see that they're all greyed out. But you can change the type of keyframe when you select them down here in these lanes, right click on them, then you can change its type. But we'll have a little look, there's a kind of a gotcha that you need to know. There's also a different way of viewing them and that's with something called curves. But We'll come back to curves in just a minute. We'll do a bit of animation. So I'm just going to go forward a little bit to about here and at this point I'm going to turn the foreground opacity fully on and I'm going to take the roundness fully up. Okay, so I've actually got some animation taking place here. Okay. Now you can see that I've got the various bits and pieces selectable, so I can actually select on these ones here. They're a little bit hard to get hold of, so you just need to be a little bit careful on actually selecting them. And you can see that the animation is taking place. However, if I right-click on one of these and make a change, say I say, do a smooth fade, nothing happens. Because it's always the keyframes that go into an event that have to change. So it should be these two that I'm changing to get a different look. If I go here and change, say, this one here, can you see I've now got a curve on this line? The curve is there because this keyframe leads into this one. So if I want this line to change, I need to change this keyframe, right-click on it, and choose Smooth Fade. And then I've got a smooth animation. And you can see the different types. You can see the difference between a fast fade, which quickly comes in, versus a slow fade, which slowly comes in, just by right-clicking, having a look at the way the lines actually change. Fast fade. So you can see the different way these lines work. So if I was to change this keyframe again, nothing would happen. But if I change this keyframe here for the roundness, it's selected. They're a little bit fiddly to get hold of, if I'm honest. But right click on that and I was to choose a sharp fade, you can see that's come up very quickly. So that's how you can change them. No point doing the second one unless you're going to have a third keyframe. Okay, so if I come to this point and I was to take my roundness all the way down again, I haven't got any change on this line. It is linear because I've not changed this keyframe. Select it. As I say, you have to select the circles, not the diamonds. 
right click and take it down to again I haven't got it make sure you get it as I say they are fiddly got the white line around it it's selected right click on it do a hold keyframe now a hold keyframe is an unusual type of keyframe in that it says you must not change value until you encounter another keyframe and then the change must be instant so it goes all the way along until it hits the next keyframe and I can change where it is and instantly it goes bang 100% change immediately no going up and going down a complete change now this is really brilliant if you were doing things like animating text and you wanted text to flash on screen or you want an item to jump about the screen you could do it with the position for example when we we're doing pan crop you could actually go in you can right click a keyframe and you can take that to hold and then when you go a bit further in time say I went to here and I was to shift things around to over here okay it's now a hold keyframe and all it does is literally stay where it is and jump so it's sort of a jump keyframe so it's a jump to go from one place to another so hold keyframes have got a very specific function but you can always undo it by selecting it get that little white circle around it and go down and take it to a different look so a smooth fade for example lanes and curves are just two ways of seeing the same thing so if I go to curves you can actually see the curves in a more exaggerated way and so you can see the way things are changing so foreground opacity and roundness if I click on that one they are even harder to get hold of here so be careful got it that time but if you move slightly and you right click on it occasionally you can lose it do a slow fade again you can get a slightly more exaggerated look and remember it's always the first one now you see I told you how hard to get hold of you can try and click where you know it is got it that time or just click on the name to actually bring the appropriate curve forward so let's actually do roundness and if I right click on the roundness one that firstly selects it the second right click will allow me to then go in and say do a smooth fade okay so they're just different ways of seeing and accessing these points and making changes these are curves so we can change the curves we can see how they look again I can select that first right click selects it oh, missed it got it so they're quite hard to get so first click selects it nope didn't quite get it so you can see how hard it is got it that time now I can right click on it and I can change it to a slow fade okay so you can see that these are the ways of changing things if you want to add a keyframe in so I want to add a keyframe in, decide what you want to add it to and then I can say add a keyframe there and then this keyframe is affecting this line you can see it's now linear along here select it right click on it change it to a sharp fade okay so this is how you can change your keyframes and you can see them lanes and curves work in a different way they are doing the same thing they're just different ways of seeing the same information so you can see curves gives you a, a bigger view if you want an even bigger view you can actually stretch this out to get a much bigger view and see how it's going but when you go to lanes it'll always just be the lanes that go along here the final thing to say is have you noticed the colors have you noticed that we've got pink yellows and blues this is to indicate the type of keyframe it is so if I right click on this one here and I change that to a linear fade it's just gray right click it and go to a smooth fade it's sort of a, a sort of a bluey purple and then a fast fade it's going to be a green and right again and then a slow fade is going to be sort of a tan color and sharp fade is the pink that we've seen and a whole keyframe I think are the red ones so as you can see the colors indicate the type of keyframes they are when I go to curves I don't have that same feedback I don't actually have the type of keyframe indicated by colors whereas in lanes I do have them indicated by colors and the more you get to use this the quicker you learn which is which so I can look at this and say oh so that's that type of keyframe and this is another type of keyframe but the giveaway to be honest with you is actually the shape of the curve and you can see that's going to come in relatively quickly stay fairly calm in the middle and then go quickly in to the actual point there so you can get a feel for what's actually going to take place in your animation just by looking at the lines so this is animation and keyframe types inside of Sony Vegas Pro very powerful very useful and it's lovely that it gives us two different ways of seeing the same thing I hope you found this tutorial useful my name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching